and welcome back to art class. This week we are going to learn about the difference between shape and form. Shape and form are two of our elements of art and they're very important and it's also important that you know the difference between these two. A lot of the times these two get mixed up but when it comes to certain things it's important that you know the difference. A shape is two-dimensional. That basically means a shape is flat. Flat like a pancake, flat like a piece of paper. All right, two-dimensional, you've got the front, all right, you've got length, you've got width, but that's about it. You don't really, it's not three-dimensional, you can't hold it, it's simply flat. A form, on the other hand, is three-dimensional, okay? It could be actually something that you can hold, an actual object that you could have in front of you. So we are going to take these basic shapes. I have a circle, a square, a triangle, and a rectangle, and I'm going to show you the different forms that you can turn them into. So we're going to do one at a time. Some of these only have one form that you can turn them into, and some of them actually have multiple options depending on what you're making them out of. So you are going to, for your project, do exactly the same things I'm doing. So it's up to you. If you want to watch the entire video and watch me turn the shapes into forms and then make yours, you can go right ahead. Or if you want to, you could grab a piece of paper, create a graph similar to the one that I've got going on here, and you can go right along with me. Remember, you can always pause the video or rewind if I'm going a little bit too fast for you. So a circle. To make a circle 3D, all right, circles are flat, they're usually one color or decorated or whatever, but when you make a circle three-dimensional, you turn it into something called a sphere, all right? A sphere might be better known to you as a ball or a globe, but the thing about making a circle into a sphere is that you're going to use another element of art to make it look 3D, and that is the element of art value. You're gonna add value to your sphere. Now, what I usually do when I make a sphere is I like to make myself a little note, a little arrow, just kind of indicating, it's probably hard for you guys to see, that this is where the light is coming from. Usually if you have a ball or something round, I was looking for something round, but unfortunately I don't see it seem to see anything right now. Um, usually when you have something round and the light is hitting it, you have a lighter area. And then where the light is not hitting it, you'll have shadows and you'll have a darker area. So I'm going to pretend that my light is coming from this direction. So this will be the lightest part of my sphere. But down here will be the darkest part. And I'm going to use my crayon. Now I outlined it with marker, but you're going to use something like a crayon or a color pencil to create some value. Now when you're creating value, it's all about how hard or lightly you're pressing on your pencil or your crayon. You don't want to be pressing super hard because you don't want to break it. The lighter you press, the lighter your color will be. The harder you press, the darker your color will be. So you kind of just have to practice and you want to go with the shape of the circle all right, of your sphere. You want that round curvy shape. And you're just gonna create it a little bit darker down here near the bottom. All right, my paper has um, a little bit of a piece of cardboard behind it, so that's why I'm getting those little lines there. Yours should be a lot smoother, all right? But I'm gonna make it a little bit darker on these edges. And then I'm going to press a lot lighter up here near the top. Barely going to touch it. And then I'm gonna blend it a little bit more around here. Perfect. And that is how you make a sphere. It might take a little bit of practice. It's gonna be a little bit rough at first, but I think you guys can do this. So to make a sphere, you're simply drawing another circle and adding value to make it look three-dimensional, like a ball or a globe or something round that you could physically hold in your hands. All right, let's move on to a square. To make a square into a three-dimensional object, you are going to be turning it into a cube. Easy peasy. Now there are two different ways that you could draw a cube, and you could try them both ways if you want. You could have a cube that's kind of invisible. I call it like a glass cube so you can see through it. Or you want to make a cube that's kind of like a regular cardboard box that you can't really see through. You just see the outsides. Um, 
I'm going to draw the see-through one for you first because if you do this with a pencil, you could actually erase parts of it and it could help you when you're making your solid cube. So you start off by, on the lower end of things, drawing a square. All right. Then in the middle of the square, make yourself a little dot and use this as the bottom corner to draw another square. So you have two squares on top of each other like that. And now you're going to take the top corner, connect it there, this corner, to this corner, this corner, to this corner, this corner, to this corner. And you have a box or a cube that looks three-dimensional, kind of like it's made out of glass and you can see right through it. But now the goal is to create a cube similar to this. Now, if you were to draw this out of pencil, I drew mine out of marker so you could see it. If I were to draw this out of pencil and erase all of the lines that were in this front square right here, and also erase this little line right here, and this little line right here, then I would have a solid cube. I would have to leave this one here because that's that corner of the box. If you want, you can also try and draw a solid box. Again, start off near the bottom with a square. All right, it's a little crooked. If you want, you can use a ruler to help you make your edges. And I'm going to draw three diagonal lines going off of all the corners that don't cross into the middle of my square. So I can easily do that off of there. I can do it off of here. Now you want to try and make it so that they end up at about the same point. And I can do the same thing here too. I can't do it from this corner though because that's going to go in the middle of my square. Then I just have to draw parallel lines there and a parallel line going down. Remember, parallel lines are two lines that never ever cross. They run side by side. They can't, one can't be tilted because eventually those two lines would come together. Parallel lines are perfectly straight and no matter where they go, they will never cross. So you have parallel lines on either side and you can create a 3D cube. You can also feel free to add a little bit of value to these cubes if you want. Try it out, make a couple of one side dark, one side medium, one side light, and kind of just play around with it a little bit. But you would take a flat square and turn it into a 3D cube. We're gonna write that here, cube. And I forgot to write sphere up here. Sphere is actually S-P-H-E-R-E. -E. So it's not spear, it has the H in there, so it kind of sounds like an F noise, so noise. So it's sphere, kind of like sphere. Fear, but with an S in the beginning, sphere. So you have a circle becomes a sphere, and a square becomes a cube. All right, we have two more shapes that we need to turn into three-dimensional forms. The first one is a triangle. Now, there are actually three things that you can turn a triangle into depending on where you draw the lines to make it three-dimensional. Now, the first thing that you can turn a triangle into is you can turn it into a triangular prism. Or I like to think of a triangular prism as more of like a tent shape. Like if you're going camping and you were going camping in a tent, you would be in a triangular prism. So you're gonna start off with the triangle. I'm gonna draw it down here at the bottom. And I'm going to draw two diagonal lines that go off of my triangle. I can't draw three because I can't have one that goes off of this corner because it would cut in the middle of my triangle. But I can do a diagonal line here and one here. It almost kind of looks like the triangle is waving, like if he had a little arm and he was saying, hey. All right, and then I'm going to draw another one that's parallel to this line. And now I'm going to draw one more line that's parallel to here to connect these two together. And there you go. Easy triangular prism. Kind of sort of looks like a tent that you would pitch if you were going tent, if you were going camping. Tenting, camping. So that is a triangular prism. Alright, that one's a little crazy when it comes to spelling it. Triangular prism, because we want to leave some room in this box. We may have to come down into our rectangle box to draw our other ones. You can also turn a triangle into a pyramid. 
And this is how you do that. Start off with a triangle, always starting off with the basic shape, and then you're adding to it to make it look three-dimensional. To turn it into a pyramid, you're actually going to, again, draw that little line, kind of like the triangle saying, hey, and putting up its hand and waving at you. And then all you're going to do, instead of having this line across the top here, you're going to draw a line that goes from the top point down to that line. There you go. Easy pyramid. So this is a pyramid. Kind of like the ones that you could see if you were to take a little field trip to Egypt. Now the last thing that we can turn a triangle into is if instead of on the bottom, a pyramid or a triangular prism, if we were to look at the bottoms of these two, the pyramid would have a square bottom and the triangular prism would have a rectangular bottom. So the bottoms would look like a rectangle or a square. But if we were to give a triangle a round bottom, it would turn it into yet another three-dimensional form. So think about it. If I were to give this triangle a circular bottom to it, it could turn it into a, feel free to yell it out if you know it, a cone. All right, usually you think of a cone as flip the opposite direction, kind of like an ice cream cone. But we're gonna draw the cone of two different directions. Again, if you start off with a triangle, the key is though, is that you don't want to draw the bottom of the triangle. This is what turns it into a cone. Simply give it a rounded bottom. Or if you were to flip that cone upside down, you would draw an oval first because you're looking at it from the side. And then here is your triangle. So you have a cone. Another thing that you can do to your cone to help make it look more three-dimensional is take something blendable like a color pencil or a crayon and add a little bit of value. And you would want to make it dark on one side and then blend it to pretty light on the other. Kind of like that. So you can take your cone and add a little bit of value to it if you want to play around with it. You can add value to all of these. If you make one side dark, one side light, it'll help make them look more three-dimensional. So that is your triangle. You can turn it into a cone, a pyramid, or a triangular prism depending on what you need and what you decide to draw. All right, our last shape is a rectangle and you can turn a rectangle into two different things again depending on the shape that you put on the two shorter ends because remember a rectangle has two long sides and two short sides and depending on what you put on these short sides you can end up with one of two different forms the first one is pretty easy it's very similar to the way that we drew our cube and you would start off with your rectangle and just like you drew your cube, you would do diagonal lines coming out of all the corners that don't cut into the shape. So again, can't do one here because that cuts right into my rectangle. I'm going to have a parallel line that goes along with that and a parallel line that goes vertically. Or if your rectangle was on its side, you would do the same thing, but it would be laying on its side. So it depends on which direction your rectangle is turned in. But you would be creating a rectangular prism. Okay? You would have a rectangular prism. Now, one more thing that you can turn a rectangle into when it's a flat shape is you can turn it into a 3D form called a cylinder. And the way that you turn it into a cylinder is by, instead of having a square or a boxed bottom, you would actually give it circles or ovals on each end, and that's what turns into a cylinder, like a candle or a can of soup, okay? So the way that you can do that, and it depends on which way you want to face your cylinder, you can have an oval on the top, two parallel lines, and here's the key. You can't make the bottom flat. If you do a flat line, it will no longer look like a cylinder. It's just going to look like a really weird form that does not quite look 3D. You have to make sure that you make that bottom round, just like this curve is round. Or maybe you're looking at your cylinder from the opposite direction. Maybe you're looking at it from the bottom. 
all right? But no matter what with a cylinder, and you can try it out if you have like a can of soup at home or something like that, no matter what you do, you cannot see the top and the bottom at the same time. It's either one or the other. You cannot send me a shape that looks like this. You cannot send me a cylinder that looks like that. That is not correct, okay? Because no matter what you do, and I can prove it to you, if you have something that's shaped like a cylinder, no matter how you tilt it, you cannot see the top and the bottom at the same time. You can only see one or the other. And again, all of these forms, you could take a crayon or a colored pencil and you can show value to make them look even more three-dimensional. They already look pretty three-dimensional after we've already drawn them, but I can promise you that if you take the time to add a little bit of value, make it dark on one side, and then make it light on the other, it makes the figures look even more three-dimensional. But the key to making them look three-dimensional is you also want to shade along with the shape of the form that you have drawn. So if we tilt our camera up just a little bit, our shapes and our forms, your circle turns into a sphere, your square turns into a cube, your triangle can be a triangular prism, a pyramid, or a cone, and your rectangle can be a rectangular prism or a cylinder. So what I want you to do, if you've been drawing along with me, you can add a couple final touches, or if all you did was watch me draw mine, you can rewind and pause the video, follow back along with me, and create your own shapes and forms chart. Then make sure you take a picture and you send it to me so I can give you a grade and give you credit for doing the work. And I can't wait to see all of your shapes turned into forms and how great you are probably going to do drawing them because you are all amazing artists. Remember that. You can do this. Every child is an artist and I can't wait to see your work. And I will see you guys next time for art class.